Hey, are you a business owner, entrepreneur, or professional? If so, we want you to apply to be a featured guest on our show. My name is Adam Torres, and I host the Mission Matters series of podcasts. I've recorded over 3,000 episodes, and we are just getting started. How do you know if you'd be a good guest to be on the show? Well, only one way to find out, and that's to apply, but I'm going to let you in on a little secret. We want guests that have a story to tell, guests with a brand, a product, or a service that can benefit my audience of listeners. If this sounds like you, go to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. I'd love to talk to you and get to know more about your story. Again, head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, now let's get into the show. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Business Podcast, your source for all things business. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres to keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Christina Nguyen on the line, and she's a business development lead over at Rhythmic Technologies. Christina, welcome to the show. Hi there, Adam. Thank you so much for having me. It's been quite an awesome day, and I can't wait to end it with you today. <laughs> All right, so uh, I- I'm excited about today's topic. This is, a, this is an interesting one. I, over 3,000 episodes I've done, I don't think anybody's addressed this yet, so kudos on finding a new topic, number one, and I want to know how to do this, so we're going to talk about keeping your sanity while networking. And for everybody that's listening to this, I know we've all at one point or another lost our sanity while being out there networking, so I'm excited to get your tips, Christina. Um, but before we do that, let's go a little bit further into what you're doing over at Rhythmic Technologies. Tell us a little bit more about the company, please. Sure, sure. So Rhythmic Technologies, we were founded about 13 years ago, um, and we originally could be considered a traditional MSP, but... Uh, the last few years, we switched focus. We definitely focus more on the AWS, Amazon Web Services side of the world. Um, you can consider us uh, an infrastructure as a service type of company where we help develop and provide the infrastructure uh, for engineers and developers to, let's say, crush the market or experiment without risk and be able to get those really awesome apps that we're all so used to using. That's awesome. And uh, at the end of this, I'm going to give you an opportunity to leave a website or, or um, so if somebody wants to follow up, but I want to make sure that the right people follow up with you. Um, what's, the, what's the right type of fit or client um, to typically work with Rhythmic Technologies, whether it's size of company, industry, um, or, or any of the above? Um, so we actually just went over these conversations uh, not pretty recently with my company. And what we're finding is pretty much anybody running at, um, AWS now, that's probably bad juju to say anybody, but typically it's those who have really complicated systems, have a have a pretty established developer team. Um, company size really doesn't matter for us. Location doesn't matter for us. As long as they're working on something really cool and complicated, the more complicated the better. Um, and Amazon Web Services makes a good client for us to talk to. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, and I think it's a great transition. So let's uh, let's uh, switch it up. I do want to get into today's topic. So keeping your sanity while networking. So for anybody that's ever been out there networking or doing business development or anything like that, it's not easy to do. I know I know I can speak for myself. I've, I've personally lost my sanity more than once in my business development endeavors um, in the past, and, po- and I'm possibly in the future. I'm going to listen. I'm going to take notes on your on your tips today. So where do you want to start with this with this conversation? Because I think it's a great topic um i want to start virtual networking and then we can kind of step back to an in-person networking and all the tips i have for both sides of this let's do it all right so with virtual networking and this is all self-taught self-lessened um, and practice and one of my favorite ones is making time for procrastination uh, I'm finding, and I'm sure I'm not the only one, when you're at home working from home on however many days, I think it's like week 20 something now um, in 2020, but working from home and making sure you actually make time for procrastination. Um, I've heard a couple of different tactics between, you know, working for 45 minutes, taking 15 minute break, um, doing something for a period of time and almost rewarding yourself with a little bit of YouTube or LinkedIn searching or just something that fills your day. Uh, but making time for that procrastination because 
I'll be honest, even when we were in the office meeting in person, no way anybody was always working legitly for eight hours straight um, or even two hours straight. So definitely making time for procrastination is one of my favorite tips. Um, there was a point earlier this year where I forgot to make time for lunch. I don't know about you, Adam, but lunch is always very important. And mm -hmm. time blocking time for your meals. Like if you don't eat lunch, that's cool, but maybe make a 20-minute time block for your snacks. Um, if you're one of those snackers that snack all day. Uh, but making time for that, because it's just one thing to snack while working versus one thing just snacking, just, just snacking, like feed yourself. So mm -hmm. definitely making time for snacks. Um, and breaks, too, if you want to count that. But there was a period in time uh, where I wasn't doing that. And, you, you know, you sit after, you know, three or four hours of networking or one-to-ones of people or podcasts, um, and then you forget that you have to go use the restroom. you got to go walk your dog. you got to go pop something in the microwave for yourself. So making time just for those things in your workday is very important because, you weren't really doing that when we were in the office, and to do that when you're at home and everything's here at your leisure, it's it's just really something I learned, and it took me a, lot, a while to, to kind of wrap my head around that. Like, wait a minute, I'm making time to procrastinate? All right, uh, same <laughs> thing. So, um, so I started doing that, and that way the times that you are focused on, I guess you can almost count that procrastination time as a reward, and I, I very enjoy that. Um, Let's see, the next one would be check out, when you check out for the day, like check out for the day. Don't don't look at your notifications, don't look at your emails. Um, it's like one thing to go down your feed on LinkedIn or even on Facebook or anything like that. But when you check out for the day, like check out. I've seen, I, I mean, I'm guilty of it. I'm much better at it now than I was before, and I still see mm -hmm. people who do it now. Um, and especially with you, Adam, like you're you're hella busy all the time. So I hope you check out when you check out, you know. Um, but like for the weekends, I try not to email anybody. I try not to like have business conversations on the weekends. Like if somebody emails me at 6 p.m. on a Friday, I'm unlikely going to respond till Monday. And I know if it's something I could answer, like sure I could, but I checked out, you know, and I don't have kids, you know, I just have a husband and I, so it's much different as far as like time balance that, but it's just like, you kind of have to respect your own quality time for your life. Um, and if you don't, then you're just going to be over, you know, burnt out or overturned and your work never seems to end when you don't check out. So that one, um, I've very much started doing that since like May. And I've had a couple of breakdowns, a couple of meltdowns here and there. I'm six five. In the last eight months, so I would say it's a good ratio, but very much less so since I started checking out, actually. That's awesome. And I feel like that, like this process, it just makes o overall for more, for more productivity when you are focused on, on work. Cause that's the thing. I think that's the, that's the misconception is that, um, is that, you know, you always have to be on. And if you're not, then maybe you're not getting work done. But are they fine? You know what I mean? The more, if you have to make that time for yourself, then it's possible that you're going to be more productive when you are 100% focused. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Definitely. Um, and and it's well, the whole virtual world, like my my world was kind of turned upside down because I was very much a heavy networker um, in person and learning these lessons of just self-care. And when I say like self-care, like if you want to take those procrastination moments and just put lotion on your face, like do that <laughs> and take your time and enjoy that. If you want to just like, I don't know, file your nails or just walk your dog or say hi to the kids, your wife, or have a phone call with an old friend, like there are just so many little things that I find so much more rewarding to my time when I'm like, all right, cool. I just busted my butt for 45 minutes writing a bunch of emails and now I'm going to go put lotion on my face. And it just feels so much more better and like that, that self-care is just much more important now than I ever thought it would be because like before like all right cool I could put lotion on my face but it was like all right when you get out the door I can go to this next next networking event and mm -hmm. now it's like all right cool I can't wait for those 15 minutes where I can just not be working and, and enjoy myself um, so I recommend for anybody to find any reason that you could go forth for it like do it um, so, so I want to, uh, is. 
So I want to get, uh, I, I know that you also, and these are, I mean, these are all great tips, um, but I do want to also talk a little bit more. I know that um, I see here that you, you're working on a charity initiative. So tell us a little bit more about that. Sure, sure. So with uh, the Times, we wanted to uh, work with a local company here in Virginia, and it's uh, JK Community Farms, where they provide back chemical-free and organic foods to needy families. And we started this initiative to not just ask for a dollar or, you know, have individuals just donate, but to also get companies to take the pledge, essentially, so that they match their employees and what they um, have raised. That makes sense. So really just reaching out to companies on a, on a, I guess, an enterprise basis to make promise that they would match their employees and what they raise. So just starting something organically like that has really been a learning lesson and kicked our butt. There are so many charities out there that do this for a living and not so much a, a single company like us trying it out. Um, but mad respect to any of the charities out there doing what they do. Um, it's so much more harder in the times that it is, but um, I'm really happy that, that our company kind of took the lead on this and, and created the, an organic initiative like this and working with an awesome company um, that supports this area. And hopefully, uh, we've got a couple of pledgers already and a couple of individual uh, donatees um, to it. So it's been really nice. Um, slow growing, but it is what it is. <laughs> and very happy um, that we're able to do something like this and still give back and still be a part of the community. That's exciting. And I mean, I, I think that component, it just, uh, it just adds, not just to the workplace and the feel and the mission. I mean, uh, you know, obviously we're pretty mission based and, and I feel like the good thing is, mm -hmm. is that even in business that people are more and more starting to meld the two. It's not like, uh, you know, the, the, just the, the, um, the charity or stuff like that. It has to be outside of the workplace or it's not just a check that's written by the company, but people are now getting more and more involved, which I think is cool. The inclusivity just, I think it builds great company culture and I'm always a, fan, a big fan of that here, um, companies that are doing initiatives like this. Um, so, Christina, that being said, uh, I could talk to you all day long, but we're about out of time for this episode. So if somebody's listening to this and they want to learn more about Rhythmic Technologies or they want to connect with you and your team or learn more about the content that you put out, I mean, what's the best way for them to connect? I live on LinkedIn. So that is Christina with the Y, um, me and, and you can always find me on LinkedIn. We're, my company, Rhythmic Technologies, is pretty much everywhere else between Twitter, GitHub, uh, Facebook, and all those things. But I, myself, you can find me on LinkedIn. And happy to talk about any of this, if any of this interested you, any about the networking side stuff I do. Um, always happy to chat. And I'm a sucker for conversation, Adam, so you're absolutely right. I can probably talk to you for hours. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, Christina, it's been awesome having you on the phone today. Appreciate all the work you're doing and, uh, and your company. And to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, uh, leave a review on the Apple iTunes Store. And if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Business, definitely give us a subscribe there, but also leave us some comments on the video. Love to know what kind of projects and things that you're working on. And Christina, thanks again for coming on the show. Thank you, Adam. Have a good day, everyone.